pages on your left, John Cuvier. Look at oh boy, hair off. Mm, oh yeah, this is this is this a, hair a hair off. off. Who? Take yeah. your pick. I don't know. This is the best John's hair has ever looked. I've known John for like ten years. Uh, the beard adds such an extra dimension to it. it you know, it's hard. Uh, these tough decisions so early in the morning. It's an underdog tale for me. I'm leaning with John. Normally, Major's hair wins easy. Easily wins. But I think, John, we'll get another shot of them as they go to their sideboard. But we're going to pay attention to the match here for the moment. Oh, never mm. mind. It's going to be tough to do now. Yeah. It's Ooh. also it's also natural. You know, Major's kind of got that feathered look. Yeah. It's yeah. it's a little try hard, you know. Cuvier over here, au natural. <laughs> John <laughs> with an etch champion to get things started here this morning. An orthopter, a spring leaf drum, a blink moth nexus, any dark, Citadel, dark citadel. Those are the permanents for him. For Michael Majors, it's just a boring old cinder glade. That's champion, a swing card in this matchup uh, by itself, not doing a whole lot, but with pair with cranial plating, a very fast clock that's challenging for Majors to interact with. Heck, even a Ravager kind of moving all in and dumping some counters onto that thing. It'll be somewhat difficult for Majors, who's going to play a Sakura tri are going to search up a land here with the wooded foothills. It'll be a basic mountain. We'll pass the turn back over to John. John will draw. Looks like he's picked up a copy of Thoughtcast. Haven't seen that one a ton. 4X. Wow. A little bit of a throwback. What year is this? Often Affinity decks can afford to have one colored spell in the deck. Sometimes you see Galvanic Blast. Sometimes you see Thought Seize. Cuvier this weekend on Thoughtcast instead. Well, there is a Thoughtcast. That's an Ink Moth Nexus. However, I think John is going to attack here for two with the Edge Champion. I think what he's missing right now is just the payoff card. Yep. So we're talking Cranial Plating. We're talking Arcbound Ravager. Something really nice to do. Let's see what this is now. Okay, there's a Ravager, so he's doing all right. And... Looks like a Vault Scourge as well. So his hand is more or less empty at this point. He's got a Dark Soul Citadel left over, and of course a draw step to take next turn. But the permanents are out there. Affinity doing what Affinity does, and now Majors is going to have to try to keep up. Ton of artifacts on the battlefield here, and it wouldn't surprise me next turn, uh, or in response to Majors playing some sort of removal or sweeper on his own turn, to see Cuvier move a lot of his resources onto the Edge Champion. If he can maintain Metalcraft, but make it large enough uh, that it's a significant clock, I think Cuvier is well served to do that. Majors will search for a mountain with the Sakura Tribe Elder. And he'll be taking his third turn here in just a moment, but he is certainly under the gun at this stage in the game. Michael will draw. Let me see, I believe a search for tomorrow is the draw step. Now he does, I believe, have a copy of Anger of the Gods in hand. We know he has him in the main deck this weekend. Two copies main and then an additional one in the sideboard. Here is the search for tomorrow. And Major's eschewing the Anger of the Gods for the time being. I think in part because it doesn't really do anything to the clock. Kuvia can sacrifice all of his creatures to the Arcbound Ravager and then sacrifice the Ravager onto the uh, Edge Champion, so it's not really disrupting the clock. And at that point, I think Major's is better served just trying to ramp into Primeval Titan as fast as possible. There's Valakut. And that'll be Major's turn. Now, Major does have a Lightning Bolt in hand. He's playing four copies of that card this weekend as we head back to John, who picked up a Glimmer Void for the turn. So just lands here for Cuvier, though one of them is an artifact land in Darkstell Citadel. See which land he does want to play, assuming he wants to play one this turn. I would imagine Cuvier is going to make some sort of move with the Ravager, sacrificing some of his lands at least as Majors is threatening a Primeval Titan next turn, and Cuvier really needs to get this game done inside of two turns. It does make you wonder how he wants to go about using these Nexuses as well. He's got a Blink Moth and an Ink Moth. I'm sure that Infect route is somewhat tempting, especially with a Ravager out there. And we're going to see him attack with plenty of permanence. Blink Moth, Ink Moth, Etch Champion. He's going to start sacrificing artifacts. You had a feeling he would. Springleaf Drum down, Dark Cell Citadel down. Definitely the extraneous artifacts can go. Ornithopter, that's extraneous. That's going to bite the dust as well. It makes going to, going to make Ravager into a 4-4. Another drum? All right, how about a 5-5? Five five? Is right. that Ravager still hungry? Maybe want to chomp on that Citadel? Well, the risk is Majors has Lightning Bolt mana up. 
And Cuvier still has this covered in two turns, the way the board looks. So there's no reason for him to take a risk. It doesn't appear as though he's going to. It's nice as a backup plan, though. For example, if Majors taps out for Primeval Titan next turn, uh, that Nexus may be a route to victory that he can't generate through damage. Uh, but as it stands here, I think with the Ravager plus the Edge Champion plus his ability to maintain Metalcraft, uh, Majors can't simply tap out for Primeval Titan or something along those lines. Cuvier just has him covered on the way back. Majors at 8, John at 19. And you do see a little bit of infect on Majors as well. And I like that line last turn from Kubiak quite a bit. Get rid of your trash, push the game into a two-turn clock, but don't take any unnecessary risk by going for the kill that turn by moving the Ravager onto the Nexus. Does Michael have a way out here? He looks like he's in some serious trouble right now. And, you know, this is the compare contrast we kind of talked about with, with this matchup, Affinity versus Elves. Uh, Majors had Lightning Bolt and Anger of the Gods in his hand the whole time this game. Those cards were excellent when he played against David Irvine yesterday. And here, it, it looks likely like he's just going to die with those cards in his hand. Yeah. I mean, that's just kind of the difference of Affinity and Elves. You know, one of the things about Affinity, pretty resilient deck. Yes. Very hard to pick this deck apart with just spot removal. Two mana here. Majors are going to start with an Explore. He'll draw a card. Another copy of Anger of the Gods. The first one wasn't very good. I can't imagine the second one will be. Is there a way for Majors to even keep up appearances at this point? I don't think there is. Yeah, I don't think so either. And I feel that way simply because John's turn is so simple. He's just, I'm going to attack you. Yep. I mean, he has lethal on the table right now, so he doesn't really have to do anything. And any removal spell that Majors could respond with, uh, Cuvier has a bunch of tricks on the table because of Arcbound Ravager. Thoughtcast the draw. The Glimmer Void will be the play. He will play the Thoughtcast. That'll resolve two cards coming here for John. Cranial Plating, and I believe Mox Opal. Yes. I've seen worse draws. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, he, <laughs> he still has the win on the table, but yes. this is good insurance. Absolutely. I think that's going to go to the champ. Yeah, that's a good choice for the Cranial Plating. And it's time for the beatdowns. And Majors will scoop up his permanence as John Cuvier is going to win game number one here over Michael Majors. Affinity very quickly up a game over Scapeship, but more importantly, the hair versus hair battle going mm -hmm. to John so far. Yeah. Oh, natural. Not trying too hard. We take a look here at the sideboards. We'll start with Michael Majors, who has three Obstinate and Bailoff, two Ancient Grudge, two Chalice of the Void, two Engineer Explosives, two Nature's Claim, two Grab Trigger's Cage, a, a Sudden Shock, and Anger of the Gods. Plenty of good ones here for Michael. Yeah, I, I think the Sudden Shock, the Anger of the Gods, the Nature's Claims, the Engineer Explosives, and certainly the Ancient Grudges are all positive here. Even though the Sweepers looked pretty bad in that game, uh, when he has enough spot removal and cards like Ancient Grudge to break up cards like Arcbound Ravager, then the Sweepers become much more potent. So I think he wants to bring in a lot of this stuff. Other side of things here for John Cuvier, he's got two Thoughtseize, two Gear Pile Aether Grip, two Spell Sky, two Ancient Grudge of his own, two Spell Pierce, and some fun ofs in Tormod's Crypt, Grafdigger's Cage, another copy of Edge Champion, so good in that first game, a Galvanic Blast, and a Blood Moon. I think the extra copy of Edge Champion can come in here as he should anticipate a lot of removal coming in on Majors' side. I think the two copies of Thoughtseize, perfect for this matchup. Majors is just accelerating into a few payoff cards, so Thoughtseize seems well positioned in this matchup. Uh, you could also possibly talk me into uh, Spell Sky here, as it's a reasonable anti lightning bolt measure and can be disrupted to Valakut itself at times. Well, well, those are the options there for both players. Some pretty good ones available to each other. Michael Majors will be on the play, but as they do get ready for game number two, let's talk about the StarCityGames.com weekly sale. It's almost over, folks, at Monday at 10.59 a.m. East Coast time, but it's a pretty good deal, so you might as well check it out. Yeah, right now, 25% off all moderately played foils. You can go over to StarCityGames.com and check out the sale every Monday at 11 o'clock Eastern time. We post a new sale, so make sure to check back to the website once a week to see what is on sale. Right now, again, moderately played foils. Sale is running out. you got about 24 hours left, so head over to the website now and check out the deal on all these foils. Can't forget as well that Kaladesh is coming out pretty soon, too. We'll have the pre-release next week. And then after that, of course, will be release week in Indianapolis, so definitely looking forward to that. And I'm curious to see what Michael Majors is going to bring to the table that weekend. The 25-year-old from Evans, Georgia, with his five open top eights and one invitational top eight in New Jersey a couple weeks ago. 
but a very innovative deck builder was one of the first people to find Team or Emerge and Standard, helped put Eldrazi on the map when you were playing four Eye of Ugans, four Eldrazi Temples, four Orborgs during, of course, Eldrazi Winter. And I have to imagine with this new set and all the crazy things you can do with vehicles and Planeswalkers and Fabricate, he's going to have a nice one for week one. I like the way that Majors goes about building decks because it's innovative without trying to do things for the sake of novelty. Yep. He's trying to identify the powerful cards or the powerful synergies, but uh, also explores the entire card pool. So, deck builder to look out for. Absolutely. And I think one of the nice things about Majors, too, is that he's willing to try anything. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we saw at the Invitational when he was playing Obzon. Uh, most people would play, be playing Dark Confidant. He was playing Grim Flayer, obviously, in combination with Lingering Souls. He said that was pretty good for him over the course of the weekend. Tried some different main deck cards, like Nile Spellbomb and some other things to prepare for the tournament. So, uh, everything is open for him. There are no sacred cows in his deck building, which I think makes for an interesting thought experiment and eventually leads to some pretty good decks. And p possibly a little bit of a Brad Nelson influence on him. Brad Nelson does not care about what deck he plays in tournament, just yeah. wants to play what he believes the best deck to be. Uh, this is not a deck that I would have associated with majors, but I think he just thinks it's well positioned for this weekend. Yeah, normally playing Grixis. Mm -hmm. We see that quite a bit. We saw Obzon, as I mentioned, at the Invitational. I did not expect to see him playing this, that's for sure. But he's off to a fantastic start. He is 8-1 here. In great position to make the elimination rounds. It looks like he's going to keep his opening hand. John will not. He will send it back. Not happy with what he's seen. So we'll see if the Affinity player can find a better six to work with. Affinity deck can actually mulligans pretty well, though. Yep, I mean, the, the big issue is, you know, you need one of your payoff cards. But if you do draw one of your payoff cards, almost any hand is functional. Yeah, Ravager, Cranial Plating, some other playoff cards in the matchup. As these players do continue to get ready here for game number two, we'll talk about what they're playing for here. Both off to great starts at 8-1. and one. If they do make the elimination rounds, they'll be at the very least walking out of here with $500. Top four will give you 1000 Finalists will get 2000 And, of course, first place is that $5,000, 30 SCG points, and an invite to our Atlanta Invitational later this year in December. Top 16, top 32, top 64, so on and so forth. Everyone looking for some SCG points, especially Michael, who's looking to qualify for that Players' Championship later this year. And you can see, you know, the, the top eight gets you to 15, the win gets you to 30. And if you looked at our season three leaderboard, players right now in the top of the standings with, you know, 50 points, 40 points, make up a huge amount of the gap this weekend. Yeah, things are very, very close here. As we're in our third event of season three of the SCG Tour, Indianapolis two weeks from now, we'll certainly go over that schedule a little bit later today as John is taking a mulligan down to five. Majors tie, trying to tie things up here in the hair versus hair battle. But down. Not by much. Down right now. <laughs> Down right now. Maybe looking to even it up here. Now, I've talked to Mike a little bit. Facial hair, he can't really do. So I think John just kind of gets an edge. Well, Majors has a kind of a perpetual uh, 5 o'clock shadow is too strong for it, but a little bit of scruff. Like a 3 o'clock shadow? Yeah, something like is that. Is that a thing? But again, it's, it's scruff but with intent. Oh, I like that. You can market that. Paired with the feathered hair. It's all part of the, you know. Fun fact about Michael Majors. He, he gets They're his, all fun facts. That's true. He gets, <laughs> he gets his haircut in Georgia. Okay. He goes back to Georgia? Yeah. yeah. He'll only get his haircut in Georgia from the one barber. I imagine that Majors goes to a stylist. Maybe. I don't, I don't necessarily believe barber. Okay. There's a search for tomorrow on suspend. He's got one guy. Whenever he heads back to Evans to go see the family, he gives him a call and he says, I'm going to be in town. Mm -hmm. Need to get an appointment set up if you don't mind. Is it a house call sort of arrangement? Does this person I come know, to I the, don't, ma I don't know the major's the, residence? I don't know all the details. <laughs> Sounds like you know a lot of them. I was surprised. <laughs> I was surprised by this. I realize. Here's a spring leaf drum. We're going to head back over to Michael now. Search tomorrow is going to go down the one counter on suspend. Majors will play a mountain. I think we might see a tri to We do, and he's off to a great start this game as we head back over to John Cuvier. And I believe Majors with some lands and a primeval titan. So unless Cuvier has one of his sideboarded thought seizes or uh, something goes really wrong here somehow, uh, I think we might be very quickly going to game number three. How about a Mem Knight instead? It's a good, good follow-up. Yep. Here's an Ink Moth Nexus. Wa Want to let him know you're not going down easy. <laughs> <laughs> Blink Moth Nexus will go active. There are three artifacts on the battlefield. So, here's a thought cast. Not the most exciting of turns here from John, but again, he is on a mulligan to five. Cranial plating and seal overture were the draws. Those are good magic cards. 
I don't know if we're going to have that kind of time. I'm not sure we will. <laughs> we'll find out. Major will sacrifice to screw a tribe elder. He's also going to search tomorrow as well. Just a little bit of shortcutting here from Michael. As he begins to take his third turn of the game. Basic mountain and basic mountain. One from search, one from tribe elder. Of course, sacrificing the tribe elder at the end of John's end step, then, revol then resolving the suspended search tomorrow at the beginning of his turn. And this will be Major's third turn. He's already got four mana. Going to be going to five here momentarily. The draw was a copy of Primeval Titan. There's a Cinder Glade. Majors will follow up with another copy of Sakura Tribe Elder. And he'll simply pass the turn back. Back to John we go. He'll draw. Didn't get a great look. Okay, it looks like it's a Ravager. All right, so he's got all the payoffs in the world, but can he beat the Titan and the Valakuts? That's the question. He's a little slow out of the geek this game. If Majors was on a bunch of removal this game, if he just had his Engineer Explosives and Anger of the Gods, I think Cuvier actually might be in a really good position. But I don't think his hand is really equipped to handle a Primeval Titan coming out this fast. There's another copy of Blink Moth. There's two of those to just one Ink Moth on the battlefield here for John. There's Ravager. Memnite's going to assist the Springleaf Drum for the Steel Overseer. Now just going to pass the turn back. So that's a setup turn. The big turn comes after that. Majors, no interest in sacrificing the Secure Tribe Elder right now, which I like a lot, actually. I like that play quite a bit. So with Primeval Titan entering the battlefield here, he has six mounds already in play. I imagine he's going to get two copies of Valakut. Now the Sakura Tribe Elder essentially allows him to sacrifice it at instant speed to get two copies of Lightning Bolt. We're going to see Valakut plus Stomping Ground on okay. this one. If he feels the immediacy to take care of the Seal Overseer, then that's fine. Sure. Uh, point being that he wants to leave the Sakura Tribe Elder in play because he knew that he was going to be able to enable Valka anyway mm -hmm. but via the Primeval Titan trigger. So you might as well keep the Tribe Elder in play as a chump blocker plus an instant speed Lightning Bolt. Tribe Elder has a lot of value right now. Scapeshift plays a lot at sorcery speed. It's a lot of creatures and sorceries, and Valica triggers off of land drops. So anytime that you can keep the Sakura Tribe Elders in play, you can keep your fetch lands available, that allows you to play a little bit of an instant speed game that sometimes this deck struggles to play. Well, it's playing it pretty well right now as we head back John's way. And John's going to have to have one heck of a turn here because he's staring down a Primeval Titan that's looking to get a lot of mountains and Valicuts to deal a lot of damage in various places. Looks like John Straw may have been a copy of Master of Ethereum, but I think he knows, yeah, he's beat. He can't beat the Primeval Titan here in combination with the Valakuts and the instant speed activation of the Valakut off the Secure Tribe Elder. So Michael Major is going to tie things up here against John Cuvier. Scapeshift, Affinity, Hair vs. Hair going to gain over three. And that's why sitting on that Secure Tribe Elder was critical there for Majors, because if he sacks it and then casts the Primeval Titan and says go, it's possible Cuvier has a route with the Ink Moth Nexus plus either Arcbound Ravager or Cranial Pudding to kill him out of nowhere. That line of play was cut off because Majors had the ability to get a Lightning Bolt at instant speed. So that, that Secure Tribe Elder play, not trivial. You see the sideboards here for each player. We had a feeling Thoughtseize might be coming in for John. He's on the play now. John's got a full idea of exactly what Majors is up to, so Thoughtseize is looking pretty good here. Yeah, I, I think uh, at the end of the day, there's only so many payoff cards in Majors' deck, and if Coulier is able to strip out the Primeval Titan, the Summoning Pact, or the Scape Shift, that backed up by a turn four kill, which his deck does pretty reliably, uh, not easy for Majors to overcome. Michael, of course, with Ancient Grudge on the sideboard here for this particular matchup. Engineer Explosives has some value, as is Nature's Claim. So we'll see the combination of those cards in here for Majors. Both players kind of changing some things around a little bit. So while they do that, we'll take a look at the schedule for Season 3 of the SCG Tour. The New Jersey Invitational was won by Liam Lonergan. So again, congratulations to Liam and his Elf Token. That will be seen quite a bit on the SCG Tour and orders at StarCityGames.com. We'll also see him at the Players' Championship. Richmond, a couple weeks ago, was won by Ted Felicetti. A dominant performance, winning with Bant Company, the boogeyman of the previous standard format. Good to see that deck go. And now we're here in Orlando, where we'll crown the champion soon enough. And then two weeks from now, Indy. 
week one of standard. Cannot wait in Indianapolis. We're off for a week and then October 15th, the regional championships. You can head over to go.sarcygames.com slash regionals for more information. Find the regional championships closest to you. Then Milwaukee for modern. And then we close out season three in Baltimore, Columbus, and Knoxville. And then the season three invitational in Atlanta, Georgia, December 2nd through the 4th, standard and modern as the invitational formats. Now, we talk play mats here on the SCG Tour, of course. So when you do sign up for a standard open or classic, it'll be the Dark Salvation play mat that you'll be receiving free and exclusive, courtesy of StarCityGames.com. After that, if you do a little modern action like our players in the main event, how about Steel Overseer, a card that John is playing to a lot of success this weekend. And for you legacy aficionados out there, you'll be spinning the top like Joe Lissette. It'll be Sensei's divining top again. These play mats are free exclusive play mats with entry into any Season 3 open or classic to the corresponding Format as we get ready here for game number three between Michael Majors and John Cuvier. It's Scape Shift on one side, Affinity on the other. But again, most importantly, it's for Hair Supremacy. And I'm still, yeah, I'm still in the John camp. So here's the difference. Mm -hmm. You ready? One thing that I've always wanted to be able to do is be able to kind of throw my head back and my hair go places. Okay. Which I naturally don't have. Not afforded to you. Not afforded to me. Mm hmm. John's got that. Not afforded to me either. That's true. <laughs> That's true. John's got that in spades right now. Yeah. John could do a hair commercial. Right. Like if there was a fan Oof. and he was just shaking his head back and forth. Oof. Yeah. Michael's doesn't, he's not afforded that luxury, I don't think. Yeah. Majors needs to do more of the running my fingers through the hair shot. While you in know? the tank? Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. While figuring out which mountain to get with his primeval titan. Right. A lot of that. He has referred to his deck over the course of this weekend as. A mountain deck. When yeah. I asked him what happened in his round, he said, I put a lot of mountains into play. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good strategy. Ink Moth Nexus, a Vault Scourge, a Mem Knight, as John's going to fall down to 18 in game number three underway here between Cuvier and Majors. Majors with two copies of Anger of the Gods and a Lightning Bolt in hand. So he's got some interaction. Also has a copy of Search Tomorrow to kick the game off with if he'd like. But... As we've discussed with Michael, do you want to search on turn one or do you want a lightning bolt on turn one? And complicating this issue further is the fact that Cuvier has shown thought cast in his deck. Mm -hmm. So there is some incentive here for majors to try to keep him off of Metalcraft or uh, Affinity uh, early on in the game with very little information. A difficult decision to be sure if you think about maybe how the turns will play out. If you suspend search tomorrow on turn number one, turn number two, it takes time to one counter, turn number three, you resolve the search, and then you've got four mana on turn three, so maybe that's your Anger of the Gods plus Lightning Bolt turn, mm -hmm. you know? But he's just going to play a mountain and pass the turn back. It's not like Search for Tomorrow gets him to Anger of the Gods ahead of schedule, assuming that he already has the three lands. Mm -hmm. So he can take one turn off and not really break up his curve if his plan right now is to play Anger of the Gods on the third turn. Here come the beatdowns. This is a Lightning Bolt at Vault Scourge. Vault Scourge down. My meta deal, one major is going to fall down to 19. We'll see what the follow-up is here for John. It'll be an Archon Ravager. Let's head back over to Michael Majors, who picks up a forest for the turn. Does he have another lightning bolt, perhaps? It looks like he does. Okay, so he's going to target the Ravager. Because Major's deck plays so much at sorcery speed, it's very dangerous to allow Kuvia to untap with the Arcbound Ravager and move it on to the Nexus. So breaking up that line of play, really important. Major's just going to play a copy of Windswept Teeth and simply pass the turn back. I thought we might see a little suspension there in Search for Morale, but no interest. Well, he's at the spot where he can hard cast the next turn if he wants to. This is true. He wants to get as many mountains as possible with, while preserving his life total. So fetching for a forest is not great because it's disruptive to Valakut. And fetching for an untapped stomping ground is problematic because it's too damage. Mm -hmm. So if he can afford to not do either of those things, uh, I think he's better served waiting the one turn. Memnite, Ravager, and pass the turn is what Cuvier will do. Major's in a little bit of trouble now. That second Ravager is going to cause some issues, I think. No, this is this is really problematic. Especially with Cuvier having the mana up. So even if Major's cast Anger of the Gods, Cuvier can move everything onto the Ink Moth Nexus, which is already the line of play that Major's doesn't have a great answer to in the sideboard outside of uh, his Ancient Grudges. Although I believe he has Nature's Claim in hand as well. Okay. Stopping around is the land that Michael will search for.
and he will present the deck over to John here in just a moment and take his third turn of the game. Ravager essentially needs you to plus one everything removal related. So if he has a sweeper plus a spot removal spell, now he's drawn Lightning Bolt as well, mm -hmm. he may be able to work his way around the Ravager. But Ravager is very effective against someone with only one piece of removal or one sweeper. Things start to get a little bit interesting now. Majors just have a basic forest in hand, plays three of those in his main deck. Michael will play a force. He will suspend search tomorrow. Okay. That's that turn back. So I think Majors wants to take a line of play where he gets to do two things in one turn to try to blunt the impact of the Arcbound Ravager. Okay. If he can cast Anger of the Gods and Lightning Bolt or Nature's Claim in the same spot, he can probably break up Cuvier's board and also kill the thing where the Ravager counters go onto. If he casts Anger of the Gods right now, then he leaves himself for a big hit on the way back. So you might as well take this, allow Cuvier to develop more to the board, and hopefully your Nature's Claim plus Anger of the Gods next turn can take care of everything. Fighting through a Ravager th over the course of two turns is a recipe for bad things to happen. You want to do everything at once if you can. And if Majors has the fourth land drop in hand, he can hold up Lightning Bolt right now, so there's no way for Cuvier to move everything onto the Nexus, for example. Uh, that's probably a more conservative line of play. Looks like another Ink Moth Nexus here for John. He'll fire up a Blink Moth Nexus now. Will he fire up any other Nexus? It looks like the answer is yes. So Inky and Blinky, they've been fired up. A little game of Pac-Man here as everyone's going to come into the red zone. I don't know if I know the reference. The ghosts are names. Oh, okay. Really? Yeah, really. Come on, man. And Pac-Man is more of my generation than yours. So that's embarrassing, but I didn't have it. I'm going to let it go. Okay. They're more, of, they're more of blobs than ghosts. Sure. I, I believe you and I are on the the Gen X versus Millennial line, right? We're, like, directly on the line. Right. Yeah, for sure. So that's something I definitely should have had. Yeah. Pretty healthy attack here from John, but not, you know, a ton of damage. Major's going to take that damage. I believe he's going to fall down to 12 and one infect. Now here's a lightning bolt. Hiya, Arc Battle Ravager. Actually, Major's going to fall down to 11, excuse me. I like this. This is this is very much like playing against Infect. Mm -hmm. Don't do it in combat. Do it post combat. And now with Cuvier tapped out, means there's only so much that he can really do in terms of moving things onto the Nexus, unless he's willing to preemptively do everything now. Mm -hmm. And at that point, the Nature's Claim that Major has as backup answers that. So if Cuvier does very little here, the Anger of the Gods is excellent. And if he makes an aggressive line of play, the fact that there is a Shatter left over in Major's hand is perfect. Majors has developed a pretty nice game here. I still don't know if he has a payoff card. That and, I don't know either. And uh, he's not going to be able to answer everything because Cuvier has so many lands that are productive. So there's still some pressure on him to get to a payoff card as soon as possible. But in terms of managing Cuvier's board, I think Majors has found a line of play and has the cards available uh, to prevent disaster, at least in the short term. Well, it looks like John's going to make a move here. So sacrifice the Darksteel Citadel. Ravager has two counters now. Sacrifice a Memnite. Ravager has three counters now. And sacrifice a Blink Moth Nexus. Ravager has four counters. Now, maybe. That sacrifice looks to be on the stack. Michael would like to make a move. There's a fourth Lightning Bolt. Jeez. Well, Cuvier cannot keep up with all of this, so I imagine at this point the Ravager is just going to be moving the counters over to either the Bim Knight or the Nexus. I do want to apologize. thought that at least one of those was an Anger of the Gods oh. at some point. They do look a little bit similar. The game takes a much different turn if it's all lightning bolts. All right, so now Ink Moth Nexus has a bunch of counters on them, but as you did mention, it's the fact that Michael has a Matrix claim that is so good for him right now. Yep. Search tomorrow is going to suspend down to one. Michael looks like he's just drawn an explorer, so he will cast it. Draw a card. Picked up a copy of Scape Shift. He'll play a Wooded Foothills and simply pass the turn back. Over to John we go. 
Going to fire Pink Moth Nexus. Nature's Claim is going to take care of that. <laughs> All Cuvier can do is shrug his shoulders and say, four bolts of Nature's Claim, huh? Well, this is the sideboard plan. I mean, Matrix has a lot of one and two mana removal post board. He hasn't even found one of his engine grudges yet. Mm -hmm. So, Matrix has gotten to scape shift. So, there is a plan here, yep. but still blew a ways away in terms of mana. The benefit of this, this spot, is his deck is very much just mana and payoff cards. Not a whole lot of bad draws from here. Mm -hmm. And he's under very little pressure. He'll draw, anger the gods, pass the turn back. So, we're going to do a little bit of this action right now, I think. A little bit of draw go from each player. Here's a Springleaf Trump from John. Let's go back over to Michael. Michael, I think, has drawn another copy of Anger of the Gods. Oddly enough, uh, some of his very few bad draws. Yep. <laughs> Here's a Signal Pest. The follow up is another Springleaf Trump. Wooded Foothills, the draw. We might see the Anger. Yep. Got nothing better to do with it. Yeah, no reason to get risky or greedy at this point. All Majors needs to do is keep his head above water and get to Scape Shift. Blink Moth next is the draw for John. He'll play that, get in with Inky. Majors will go up to two in fact. It's a long road here for Cuvier as Majors takes a draw step. He'll just pass that turn back. Let's go back over to John. I think he may have picked up a copy of Signal Pest. There is Signal Pest. Here is Blink Moth Nexus. Ah, a little bit of bull size. Yeah. Well, I, su I suppose he might want to change it up a little bit because of the pest now. Let's see what we have here. Explore. Draw a card. Picked up a Stomping Ground. Majors, I think, very smart leaving the fetch lands on the battlefield in case he picks up a copy of Valakut. On top of that, there's no reason to take the points of damage he doesn't have to. If he casts Scape Shift, then he can just sacrifice those if he wants to. Yeah, and those aren't mountains that he's sacrificing. Those are just no. fetch lands that he's throwing away. He's also happy to draw lands because he has Scape Shift in hand, so he doesn't want to thin lands out of his deck also. That's a stomping ground that's going to have the battlefield tapped. And Michael is going to sacrifice two foothills, and it looks like we might see a scape shift here. So Major's going to get the forests out of his deck here, because he doesn't want to draw those anymore. So what I think we might see here, this will be a little interesting how he wants to go about doing this, because I think this could be like a one scape shift into a second scape shift. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe like kill the signal pest, deal you a bunch of damage, and then the next scape shift, the next turn should be able to finish it. But it depends on how many mountains, how many lands he wants to sacrifice, all that stuff. And that's why you see him kind of taking a look at the graveyard, taking a look at the battlefield, and figuring out exactly what he wants to do here. He's got plenty of mountains in his deck. Just does he have enough to do it for two scape shifts is the question. While also leaving himself with enough green mana. And this is where the addition of Cinderglade really comes into play. Yep. Uh, when these lands got previewed, I think uh, Matthias Hunt was the first one to mention to me, this is going to be a big deal for Valakut strategies because yeah. they just need as many dual lands that with a loaded land type as possible. Major's going through the deck, making sure that he doesn't make any type of error here. So there are all the mountains, and now there's a Valakut. So, six mountains, which means one trigger to Signal Pest, the other five to John. So, John's going to take 15. Now, of course, the big question is how many mountains Michael got left to work with? Yeah, well, we got we got to make the count here. We got two Stomping Ground, four Cinder Glade, seven Mountain. So, 13. I don't. I don't think there's enough in the deck for him to be able to, to run this back a second time. Cranial plating the draw. Pass the turn back. Well, Major shows, right, him, so, uh, shows him scape shift. I suppose he doesn't need to have all the mountains in the world. No, he doesn't. Yeah, he just, he just needs, needs to have, have three. Just three left. And Cuvier says, all right, you got to show it to me. Yeah. You better, I mean, don't miscount. <laughs> 
Yeah, well, it's a good time to count. Make sure you know your deck list. That's exactly what he's doing. Can he confidently cast this scape shift? Five mana. Okay. Uh. So there's scape shift. It's always kind of the uneasy feeling when playing this deck. It's just like, yeah. I think I know how many mountains I have left in my deck. So four in the graveyard plus six on the battlefield gets us a 10. He needs to have, so he needs 14 total, and he has 13 in the deck by my count. Well, it's three more shots right now, right? Yeah, he can sacrifice three. Okay. One, two, three. Okay, I think he knows. Okay. <laughs> All right. I think so he got it exactly right. So that's one. That's two. Oh, a sudden shock. That's fun. Uh, hold up. Hold up. Oh, dear. Oh, I think oh, yeah, okay, right. there's a cinder glade. Hurrah. And there's <laughs> nine up the stairs. That's going to do it. Michael Major's going to win this match here over John Cuvier. Scape shifts will take down Affinity two games to one. But for my money, John Cuvier won the hair versus hair battle.